the allotment it's Sunday the 4th of August just a quick update of uh, where we are and a quick plot tour I'm sitting on the edge of our uh, courgette bed that's still producing like crazy so thanks very much for all the comments and ideas for recipes uh, we've been cooking up a lot of uh, courgette and cheese muffins which we found out are really nice dunk in tomato soup for lunch so thanks very much for that suggestion any other suggestions would be welcome as well um, I've noticed on a few Facebook groups that people seem to be struggling with courgettes this year and um, as you can see as are still producing quite frequently although we think they're coming to the end now one of the issues we have had is uh, we've been getting a lot of mildew on the leaves so I'll go through and pick those off in a minute um, I don't know why our bed's doing better than everybody else's seems to the only suggestion I could have is we tried the Hoogle culture principle on this bed so it's uh, buried we've got uh, rotten wood at the bottom logs and twigs and compost so I don't know if that's helped sort of retaining a regular amount of moisture or whether it's uh, just luck probably more luck bearing in mind this is our first year anyway I'll give you a quick tour around the rest of the allotment and show you how we're getting on Since the last video we've been down and planted some of our leeks that we were growing on the greenhouse. They're all in their new homes now. We put them in last week and they all seem to have uh, recovered their uh, transplanting and all seem to be standing up in their holes now. As you can see our blotty beans have uh, got to the top of their structure and we're starting to get some flowers on those so hopefully we'll get some beans shortly the, the other Swiss chard at the end of this particular bed seems to be growing on quite well uh, same as the other end we do get leaf miner on this patch as well so that's a question of just going through and picking off the damaged leaves And whatever causes all the holes in the charred leaves also affects the beetroot as well. So we get lots of holes in our beetroot leaves. Although they're starting to get a bit bigger now. Yeah, that's, that's growing quite well. We did plant them quite close together, so as we pick them, it gives the others a chance. You see there, they're all multi-sown in a clump, so we'll pick them out as they grow, and then it gives the others a chance to get bigger. Um, we're trying that experiment here with a clump of leeks that we had left over from the greenhouse that we didn't we didn't. Uh, want to make individual holes for them we just planted them as a clump so we'll let them grow on and as and when we need a leak we'll uh, pull them and allow the others to to get larger right. over the back there you can see a uh, sweet corn and squash bed which seems to have developed quite nicely over the last few weeks and we planted some nasturtiums at the side and they seem to be joining in the fun as well so they're fighting with the squash for space and have gone through the fence the other side now that the, stub, now that the slugs have stopped eating them as you can see we're starting to get tassels on the sweet corn I think we're a little bit behind everybody else looking at other people's videos but hopefully we've still got enough of a growing season to uh, catch up and get some crops from these but 
those squash that did survive the earlier slug attacks are doing quite well. That's the Crown Prince variety. I'm not sure if you can see through the jungle, but that looks like a squash that seems to be growing quite nicely. I'm sure there must be some others in here somewhere. I'm frightened of treading on them. I'm not sure whether we should trim back the nasturtium so they don't overcrowd the squash. I don't know if anybody's got any comments or suggestions about that. Here's the bottle bed experiment that we did. As you can see, everything's holding in place despite all the uh, storms and massive amounts of rain so that experiment seems to have worked as you can see from the corners the marigolds seem to love growing in bottles and the parsnips also seem to have shot up a little bit but i suppose only time will tell when we come to pick them whether the actual roots are growing or whether it's just uh, foliage but in the actual bed itself carrots and lettuce have all taken and uh, and the leeks are all fattening up as well even the leeks in the bottles so maybe when I get another another selection of bottles I might make another one of these because it's quite good fun to make here's the rest of our tomatoes they're all uh, producing now we're just hoping that we get enough fine weather to ripen a few of the tomatoes up. And here's our bean arch, which uh, everything's getting to the top now. I think these are our third sowing of beans, so these are not producing yet, although we've got plenty of flowers. Um, we've got peas that we've come down to pick, so we'll have some of those for lunch. As you can see in the courgette bed, we do have one crown prince in the corner that we've been trying to train to go back into the bed with his courgette friends, but unfortunately he's a bit unruly and keeps popping out onto the path, so I'm not sure where that runner's going to go. This is our strawberry bed. That's producing runners all over the place so we're trying to train those into the correct positions and peg them down so they'll root where we want them to. And if, I'm not sure if you can see because they're quite thin and frondy but we got some asparagus seeds this year and we've heard that strawberries and asparagus are good companion plants so down the middle we've planted a line of asparagus about eight of them and we'll try and train the runners so they go away from the middle just down the sides hopefully they'll uh, give us some nice asparagus in a few years time not sure if you can see through the netting of uh, what's left of the brassica beds. The cabbages are starting to heart up. The leaves are taking some damage from the slugs. Um, Brussels still seem to be growing along quite well. They've reached the top of the cage now, so I might need to either take it off or raise it. Although there's thousands of butterflies around, so I'm, I'm not sure if that would be a good idea. Um, we're still getting bits of purple sprouting broccoli although a couple of the plants have gone to to seed so I'm not sure what to do with those I've taken all the flowers off so I don't know if they'll produce more sprouts for me to eat or whether I should take the plants up completely this is the outdoor purple sprouting broccoli and you can see the disadvantages of 
or not netting. I think these have been absolutely ravaged by the uh, cabbage whites or something nasty has definitely had a go at these ones. And in the background you can see, despite only putting the canes in that we moved from the garden this year, and they're only about a foot tall or 18 inches at the most, we've actually got some raspberries. So it'll only be a handful, but it's better than nothing. In our spare brassica cage, it's been a bit of a fight against slugs because it wasn't a very well prepared piece of land. Um, as you can see, everything everything's looking a bit battered. We did come down one day and find a cabbage white trapped inside the net, so I don't know how he got in, but he couldn't get out, so I think he had fun and games while he's in there and has devastated most of the plants. Although the cabbages are starting to heart up a bit. So if we're lucky, we might we might get something from them. This area here is the wildflower garden. We've had a nicer uh, display of poppies this year, so we're really pleased that we did that. Not attracts lots of the pollinating insects, lots of hoverflies on it and lots of bees. And in the back corner we've put in three comfrey plants to give us some comfrey tea next year. Oh well, there we go. Nasty cabbage white butterfly landing on me broccoli. Have to go and inspect that. This is the second planting of bleep second planting of beans. As you can see, it's all in flower, and we do actually have some, some beans on here. It's not too wobbly. There we go. We'll be able to take some of these for lunch today as well. And this is our first planting of beans. Oh, the earliest ones. We did have a crop in before, but they got damaged by frost. So we'll be taking some of those beans for lunch today. And our uh, swede are starting to, to fatten up now as well, and that's quite good. Unfortunately, the swede plants that were donated by one of our allotment neighbours didn't survive. We lost all of those. I think it was just the hot weather dried everything out. But uh, the ones we planted originally have all come now. This little patch here is where we had the broad beans originally. We got a few beans off them, I don't think we put enough in, enough in. I think they were damaged by the frost and black fly. We had like an ant's nest nearby and they were farming all the uh, black fly. So we've taken them, well, we've chopped down all the uh, plants now, left the stems in so it fixes the nitrogen because I've heard that's what you're supposed to do. And uh, we've put in a few, a few rows of leeks which all seem to have perked up. And that's about it really. We still have some main crop potatoes. The foliage isn't getting any bigger so I'm not expecting great thing great things from those. Uh, our first earlies hardly produced anything. We were lucky if we got a potato per plant that was usable. So we shan't bother planting any potatoes in the ground. Next year we'll put them all in containers. And one of the main issues we've got on this particular site is the person who had it before us, 
planted lots of potatoes and unfortunately didn't pick them all out so our worst weed on this plot are volunteer potato plants everywhere even growing up through the uh, raised beds so uh, we'll, we'll give these a thorough going over when we take these out and then we'll probably turn this into raised beds along here anyway that's it for the April tour thanks very much for watching again and for those people who have subscribed and made comments we're enjoying working our way through the courgette recipes I uh, have to admit I'm getting slightly sick of cor courgettes now but there seems to be lots of things you can do with them so maybe the lesson that I've learned this year is to only plant three or four plants rather than filling a whole bed with them but knowing my luck they'll probably all fail next year anyway Thanks again for watching, see you all next time.